And here they are playing for Team AAA spawn in the top right corner here on Deadwing. He is the Pink Protoss Chubbs. And his opponent playing for uh, the Barcode Clan he is Coffee, the Orange Terran. And I've never heard of him, but he sure loves coffee. And who doesn't, to be honest? But I've, I'm trying to cut down on my coffee consumption a little bit. Like every once in a while, I'll go on a coffee diet. Just go a little bit easy on the coffee consumption. Just have my morning cup and then never drink anymore. At least not for that day. But maybe maybe he's pretty high on coffee. All right, um, as I said, we're playing without sound this mat. Um, I will try to restart my... Um, I will have to try to restart my Battle.net client afterwards and then hopefully we get the sound fix just like last week. I, I have no idea why this keeps happening. Um, I think the first time it occurred was after I cleaned my Battle.net cache, but we'll, we'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. Um, I'll just try a reinstall uh, for Thursday or Friday, depending on when we'll actually get to see another cast here. <laughs> hey, Thordax. <laughs> You won't get the standy, but happy new year to you as well. There we go, we have an early gas coming out of coffee. Um, kind of uh, curious if he's gonna go for a reaper here, or um, just wants to open up a little bit of a um, faster attack route uh, overall. While Chops is going for a single gas, sending three workers in there immediately, and Going a little bit against the style that most of the players, um, most protos are playing right now. Just having these two gases uh, with um, two workers in them each. There's no stream for Gung Fu Banda? Oh jeez. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna promise right here now, if, uh, if Shops for some reason drops out, um, I'll definitely switch over to Gung Fu Banda. Because I've not seen him play in quite some time and I know quite a few people are excited to see him again, so... Um, that's definitely a reason to check him out. No, I, I checked the output, Mr. Duck. It's it's definitely some kind of bug, and I probably brought it on myself. Uh, but we'll we'll get it fixed. Not 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 to worry here. We'll just have to play without sound for now. But uh, reactor is on the way now, and there's a factory in the works. So um, maybe uh, just a few marines and uh, window mine transition just to pump out a little bit of pressure against uh, dear chops here. He is going for an early nexus and also getting his mothership core. Did opt to uh, skip any uh, zealot or stalker actions since he did see, okay, um, coffee didn't have that much uh, in his base. He went for gas, so no crazy marine pressure coming in um, all too soon. And I have a little bit more time to focus on my eco, get my uh, expo out and just skip that zealot and stalker for now. And yeah, there he is getting the stalker now, which is a pretty good spot. I mean, um, if Coffee would have went for that Reaper, um, Mothership Core would have been there to uh, just stop stop the harassment. And now Stalker is, of course, uh, pretty nice to just send over, maybe poke and prod a little bit, or uh, at least keep down here uh, at the natural. Yeah, uh, this Commencer is almost halfway finished, and we have the first Widow Mine being produced. So, just as expected. Oh, we actually um, kind of thought he might go for a swap here. But uh, this does look so, some serious, uh, serious aggression coming out of him. One widow mine, a couple of marines, and these hellions are still out there. Let's see if they can pass through. No perfect placement from Chubbs. Just keeping these hellions back. Yeah, so that's exactly why you want the stalker right here. Uh, if you see there is no early aggression coming out, you go for the stalker straight away, and the stalker is able to block the ramp and is also a little bit more flexible. And now with two stalkers coming out, I think Shops is just in a perfect spot. He also has enough energy for an overcharge, just if that ever uh, needs to needs to happen here. But yeah, he should uh, do a probe transfer here pretty soon. I mean, he does have the overcharge. Um, he has the two these two stalkers available, but he's kind of scared to um, let these hellions pass through. So that's the only reason why he's not transferring down right now. We'll have to see um, how Coffee keeps up with this, uh, like how how he keeps up with this pressure, and uh, if he can keep it going. The starport is uh, on the way, alongside with the tech lab, and there's the second starport. Ooh. 
don't know. I'm kind of curious to see what he's going, what he's going for here. We see another tech lab being produced. Uh, first starport is of course swapping over. I'm kind of expecting, um, kind of expecting a banshee, but he could also go for a raven. Yeah, that's the raven for you. First raven in production. And uh, maybe he's kind of recognizing, okay, Chops, he already had two Sturkers all the early on without having a, um, a sentry available. So kind of expecting a strong Stalker play coming out of Chops. And Coffee uh, producing a nice, um, yeah, a nice way to counter that. Having the point defense zone available with a Raven uh, is just a massive counter to, uh, to these Stalkers. Uh, early on, at least. Um, of course, later on you might get a couple more ravens and be just as fine. But um, we have first research coming in. Uh, it looks, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it looks like Cloak. So maybe he's just getting a couple of ravens and transitioning into Banshees afterwards? Or is it the raven energy upgrade? But this symbol looks like Cloak. Pretty sure of it. Oh, Banshees are moving in once again. Get a decent shot off. Catch two probes for free. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, as long as he keep these, uh, keeps these Hellions alive, he can just uh, have a look out on the army composition of Chops. And he sees a lot of Stalkers, so he's, he's still in a good spot. Has his second Raven almost available, and looks like he's gearing up to eventually take that third. Two Banshees are being produced, and a tank is also coming out. So this is a really interesting composition coming out of Coffee. Let's see if he can make it work. Um, also kind of interested what Chops is trying to do about this. I mean, he scouted the double Stargate, and right now he's going for Immortals, which seems kind of weird, at least. Um, also, of course, producing more and more Stalkers and adding in Blink, which will help out quite a bit. There's the Hallucinated Phoenix. He's going to move in there one more time, and we'll at least see a single Raven. I think the second Raven... Um, yeah, uh, where's the second Raven? Oh, over here. Okay. So he has the Marines available, and maybe they can stop the... Nope. Not gonna stop it. He sees the two Ravens, sees the entire production facilities here, sees more, more factories are being added. So I'm, I'm gonna face an um, interesting style um, coming out of coffee. Terran uh, doing the mech, mech style here versus Protoss. So that, that is kind of interesting, and I'll see. I'm kind of interested how Coffee pulls this off, and if he can, since the Immortals are already on their way. I think we already have first Immortal out, second Immortal is pr being produced right now, and uh, Shops is taking his third, so he's probably gonna add in another Robo in there just to crank out the Immortals. Also adding in a couple of Photon Cannons, since he did scout out. Okay, we have a couple of uh, we have a couple of uh, Ravens in the mix. And we also have these Banshees that could become quite a nuisance. Even uh, if he's attacking now. Okay. Uh, just a couple of Blink Stalkers. Not too much. I think Coffee can deal with this pretty easily. But the Bunker did take a little bit of damage. A uh, single Stalker was taken out, I think, in that engagement. Yep. And I don't really know what Chops is doing with this. Just maybe just keeping up a little bit of pressure to um, try to keep Coffee on two bases. Which is working out for now. And Coffee looks like he's uh, trying to check out if Chubbs has gone for a third yet. Didn't scout the um, logical location or one of the logical locations. Of course, he could go for this one, but it's a little bit closer to his opponent, so I like the idea of uh, going with this, for this third base. And he's not even trying to harass anything here. There comes the scan once again in the main and sees that Templar archives have been added. Ooh, these stalkers are in trouble. There's the blink forward. Um, actually, kind of a defensive blink, but blink upwards at least. And that's uh, three stalkers going down for you. And ooh, not not the best micro coming out of shops. Coffee actually doing a pretty good job trying to cut off these stalkers. And maybe he can get out one more. Yep, that's the not another one gone. And right now it looks pretty good for Coffee, but he did lose. Uh, he did get in a lot of damage here on these Ravens. They're quite low. There's the overcharge. And a good time warp keeping these Marines back, but the siege tanks are still frying from the back, and they have a pretty good angle here on this natural. Uh, on this third, really. Let's see if he can catch a couple of probes. But he will get rid of this third. 
So this is a pretty amazing engagement coming out of Coffee. And most of these Banshees are still alive and I don't think that Shops has enough to stop these Banshees right now. The Immortals are getting right on top of the Siege Tanks, will take out at least one more, possibly a third here. And yeah, it does look like he can clear off these, uh, these uh, Siege Tanks, but the Banshees are still up in the air. Right now plus two weapons is finished and a lot more Stalkers get into the fray. And I think he finally has enough to clear us off. Oh, uh, there's another Stalker going down. But that's a very costly engagement right now for both of these players. Of course, Shubs did lose a little bit more and he lost his third, which uh, did lose him quite a bit uh, in the macro game here. And Coffee doing quite well. Has a decent income coming in. And uh, will continue to just harass, harass his third and keep it from going up. But there's Shubs trying to go. Uh, go on top of this army once again. Hellbats are being transformed right now and they're doing quite well against these Stalkers. He's getting rid of most, most of them. The Hellbats, of course, not the best idea here against the Immortals, but they're still doing quite well. Three Banshees are still up in the air and the Banshees are really what's killing these Immortals right now. So he will have to keep them alive. And I, I gotta say, I mean, I, I'd love to see some SCVs in here just to... Ooh, I don't think that was a cancel. Uh, that was Shops losing another 300 minerals for nothing really, but he really wants that third to go up. And right now I think Coffee he could even uh, siege up a little closer to the army here and increase the pressure on, on Shops. Oh yeah, for sure. I think he can, he can definitely go in there. And Shops will try to break out here on the right side. Good idea, but right now he doesn't have the Immortal Count to just counter this army straight on. That's six Siege Tanks and four Banshees for you. They're gonna just focus out the Immortals so quickly. And Shops definitely is in trouble right here. There are more and more Siege Tanks coming over. Um, a few Hellions coming over as well. So those are gonna help out against the Stalkers. And this looks like a pretty, pretty strong composition for Coffee, to be honest. Once the photon overcharge is over, I think uh, Coffee is going to try to move up. Oh, Immortals trying to get on top of this army, but didn't quite get in range of most of these siege tanks. This is a nice concave uh, coming out of Coffee, and he is starting to siege up a little closer. Oh, not the best blink forward. It was quite aggressive, but he couldn't get on top of these siege tanks, and that's not a lot of stalkers. He's starting to um, pull probes. I don't think it's gonna help here. This is a tiny army for Chubs. Only 42 army supply versus 112. Coffee definitely, definitely on top of things right now. And he's even going for fourth behind this, adding in Vikings uh, just for good measure. And could also go for, for battle cruisers later on if he wants to. Would be kind of weird, but we've seen them yesterday, so. Would not, or uh, not yesterday, but last week. And they actually were kind of nice, kind of nice additions to the mix. And wow, GG, impressive. And if even uh, Chubbs says that, uh, it definitely is. So give me a sec here. Um, I'll have to relock and then we can get started with the next map. But this was definitely a pretty impressive play coming out of uh, the Swiss player Coffee. I was really surprised to see something like this happen. Especially against Shops, who made it uh, to the uh, round of 64 yesterday and who um, didn't actually play a bad game. But wow, perfect timing. Or um, for coffee and a really nice composition. All right, let's check the sound. Can we get the sound fixed? I sure hope so. Okay, nothing yet. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Come on. Yeah, got the sound back. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, looking good, looking good. I'll switch that back down there, and yeah, that is not bad at all. So I'll try to open the next map as well. 
so we can get um, the WCS interface one, once again. Let me just fix up this info ticker. All right. Um, Uh, no word yet. I'll try to look up Mr. Coffee. And try to figure out what the next map is going to be here. King Seong Station. Alright, let's get that on the way. Why am I going to the arcade? This is not the time for arcade games. This is time for WCS qualifier on King Seong Station. Okay, that's weird. Why is it not in the current map pool? And here, this does seem to be the right one. So, how did you guys like that build? I was quite impressed uh, by coffee, to be honest. Alright, I'll invite shops. Why can't I invite him? Oh, he's he's already in the, in the lobby. Uh, invite to game. I'll make myself a referee. And there we go. There we have them. Chops and coffee both seem to be ready. And I think we can get started here. Coffee's ready. Chops, what about you? Come on, let's get started. And there we go. He's ready as well. We're loading into the map. King Seong Station. One of my favorite maps right now. Gives us for some really interesting plays. And uh, with the stuff that Coffee put out on the last map, I'm quite excited to see um, if he's gonna follow it up with something weird again. And if Chops has an answer to it, let's see, what, what could he have done differently there? Mm, I mean, he really needed to take that third? No, oh, let's, let's get him to the game first here. Here we have him. Our Swiss player playing for the Barcode Clan. It is Coffee. He spawned in the top left as the Orange Terran. But his opponent, he needs to step up his game. If he wants to move on and have a chance at qualifying in this uh, WCS qualifier number 5, he's playing for Team Triple A, all against Authority, a French clan. It's the Pink Protoss, Chops. And of course, Coffee is leading 1 0. So, Chops uh, definitely needs an answer, and yeah, uh, we were just getting into what he could have done differently on that last map, and to be honest, um, I think more immortals. A um, couple of sentries with um, with shield would have helped. Um, but then again, he really wanted to take the third and somehow defend it. Um, I think he was also facing a little bit of trouble because he definitely had um, some issues dealing with these banshees. Those banshees took out most of his immortals, uh, so he couldn't couldn't get on top of the siege tanks. And then, um, yeah, once once all, all of the models were taken out, he should have just completely disengaged there. And right now, uh, Coffee looks like he's going for a similar style. Going for an early gas. Again, uh, getting the barracks right after. What's that purple creature called? That's a Zergling? <laughs> uh, the delay is uh, three minutes. We'll have to run a three-minute delay for WCS. 
So it's quite long, which is why I'm kind of hard to react to you guys, but I'll try my best. Alright, of course going for the marine straight away. Uh, we'll move that down and try to get an early early expansion established, like last time. We'll have to see if Chops is playing the same style. He definitely has the same building placement as last time. And this is actually a cool idea, uh, prevents runbys. But then again, when you when you really have these Hellion runbys get into the main, it doesn't really happen all that often. But still, um, like it when players just stick to their SimCity. And this time, he's not going to skip that Zealot, at least not for now. Uh, he did scout up the entire base, so maybe he's still going to skip it, but I don't know, maybe he has a certain plan here. Keeps this probe over here. I'm gonna check out, okay, do we have anything, but yep, he did cancel the Zealot. Probably just um, wanted to check, okay, do we have any hidden barracks anywhere? And instead goes for the Mothership Core, which is gonna help him, uh, or would have def would have helped him defend against early pressure. But this looks different, looks a little bit different from Coffee. Um, looks like he's opening up Marauders here and going straight for a Concussive Shell. Not seen this in, in ages, to be honest. And I'm quite excited, uh, but then again, Shops already having the Mothership Core out, already gathering energy. Um, he's, he should be in a good spot to defend this, uh, with Photon Overcharge ready. Uh, Marauders are not gonna do all that much, especially if he just goes for a couple of cent- or m maybe one or two sentries right now. And then um, just gets Stalkers and uh, Zealots afterwards, so basi your basic gateway composition. Maybe even semi-closes off with a couple of gateways. And then you, you're in a pretty good spot to um, yeah, just try to force field out the Marauders and maybe catch a few. Right now, this is just two Marines and a single Marauder, that's not gonna do all that much. Um, what I'm thinking Coffee's plan is here, just... Um, just going for the, um, just going for a bait, trying to bait out the the photon overcharge, but I doubt that's gonna happen. He gets his free probe. We'll get one more, two more, maybe even three. We'll see. This next one is gonna get finished here. So that's some nice early arrest, not losing all that much. We'll lose a uh, single marine here. Pretty certain. It's one more shot. Yep. Nice focus fire coming out of shops. But still, four workers going down early on. That's that's hurting quite a bit here. And this was just the start. He's getting more marauders behind this, and also a couple widow mines. Now let's see. Is he gonna use these widow mines offensively, or is he gonna keep them in the back uh, to keep his natural safe? Uh, and possibly go for a drop afterwards. He's still producing lots of widow mines. So I think there's a definite possibility for him to just use this aggression in the front to kind of keep Chubbs occupied. And he's already kind of winning in that regard since Chubbs is uh, oversaturating his main again. So he's playing very, very defensively, more so than you would have or you would see from most Protoss players right now. Especially since he still has the overcharge available. I don't think he ever used it. Nope. He didn't. So he still has the overcharge available. We'll have energy enough for a second overcharge pretty soon, so... Um. Yep, uh, the code for the brackets is uh, exclamation part bracket. Um, probably have to add another disclaimer just to uh, tell you guys what the code actually is. <laughs> But there's Blink, once again, coming out of coffee. Um, looks like kind of a nice timing this time. And here is that drop I talked about. And he has a couple of Marauders up front, which are getting scouted out right now. Ooh, not the best timing for this Observer, but it might actually help out a little bit. He doesn't have a second Observer just yet, and the Medivac is coming over. Blink is done, by the way, and he has quite a few Stalkers available. And kind of went for that Immortal blindly. Well, not really blindly. He saw a couple of Marauders, but he didn't actually check what more was being being produced here. And now his entire army is out of position. Um, of course, Coffee did lose quite a few units here, but let's see how much that Widowmine drop is going to do. Did he drop one in the main as well? Just see a single one over here. Oh, there's the second one. And there's the Overcharge dealing with the first Widowmine. Um, a couple of shots. Ooh. Would have micro those probes back. 
We still have two more Widow Mines in this drop, but it's quite low as well. Do we have Stalkers available over here? No, I don't think he saw it retreat. That is quite unfortunate for Chubbs. He could have had the perfect blow here. But at least these two mines won't do all that much. That's the first hit for you. And it's probably going to get a second, but Chubbs is going for some counter-aggression instead. There's a bunker available. Two bunkers, really. And Coffee, yep, he's definitely going to hold this. Chubbs uh, just saw his chance and tried to go for it, but I doubt that uh, that was actually worth it. Now he's losing a lot of time, losing, uh, losing uh, quite a few um, minutes of uh, mining time here in the main as well. So definitely not the best spot uh, for Chubbs to be in. They're even on supply, but I think um, he lost so much mining time that that definitely is going to cut into his production here. And he's a little bit behind on tech as well. He does have Blink, but the Forge is later than, than that last game, and um, having a look at Coffee's composition, he's already gearing up towards that uh, Siege Tank Banshee's uh, Banshee style once again. And is not in a bad spot. Uh, he should probably get rid of that bunker, it's impeding his mining quite a bit, but I think uh, once he get rid gets rid of that bunker, um, he can also go for another command center, at least produce it in his main, but that's a lot of bunkers already. And I don't know if these are actually all that useful, he doesn't have too many marines to actually put in there. But it's sure keeping these stalkers back. And that's not too many blink stalkers. He's still going for more siege tank behind this, and yeah, even adding in a missile turret. Just to uh, get rid of the... Um, the observer, uh, if ever, if, if um, coffee actually or chops actually produces anyone uh, anymore, and let's see, can that observer actually get in there? I think the sensor tower also helps quite a bit to uh, deflect any um, crazy play into. Oh geez, yeah, you really want to get that medivax fixed up. Yeah, I think the. Uh, the sensor tower helps quite a bit in keeping these stalkers at bay and not letting them enter into the main. But Chubbs is going for a third behind this. And Coffee is still caught out on two bases. We'll try to open this up from the back and possibly go for this third, which is okay, I guess. Um, they're not that far off, but you have a little bit of a wire opening over here. So you will need to watch out for that and possibly keep a few siege tanks back. Or just establish way better map vision. Possibly put on a couple more sensor towers to defend against this. And yeah, looks like these stalkers will find out. Okay, there is something landing over here. Uh, let's see. Shops probably gonna see the SCVs here pretty soon. Yes, they are. There they are. But he's catching up on his tech. He's going for storm, uh, getting more immortals in the mix, and going for the plus two weapons upgrade. Oh, he's in a, in a good spot. Or okay spot, at least. He's catching up, but hasn't done all that much economic damage. And here we have a couple of Hellions still waiting, I think. Yep, he saw the third went down, so he's just waiting for the probe transfer. And once that's done, trying to move into with his Hellions. And he sees the Phono Cannon, but didn't quite check out. Okay, we have a little bit of a probe train over here. Stalkers are still active out on the map. And just now Storm has finished and the High Templars uh, already gathered quite a bit of energy. But this time um, not that many Banshees quite yet. A little bit more are getting at it. Oh, it's already five. Well, never mind then. That's, that's quite good. So the thing is, he is keeping them lower in their energy supply. So he's activated at least two of these Banshees. He might actually activate a couple more. Just to keep him low, if he ever scouts out that there are already high tempos on the map, uh, I think this is definitely something that he's uh, checking out. Ooh, nice on chops, clearing this off. And that's Coffee finally going for a third. So he is definitely um, in a worse spot than last game, but didn't lose quite as much yet. Oh, uh, well, those banshees really cut out, cut out a little bit of, a little bit of chunk from his uh, resource lead, but I think uh, Chops is definitely reacting to to the style that Coffee put out last game. 
Kafi also not opting to go for any crazy aggression just yet. He's beginning to move out, but also going for ghosts at the same time. So I believe he's gonna wait for a few ghosts to appear. He's also going for the cloak, cloak reactor. For the banshees and adding in two more starports. So these are gonna help out quite a bit in in going for a transition after this mix is done. Ooh, nice storm here on the right side. And there's another feedback, but oh, that's a costly engagement. I think those high templar were quite quite as worthwhile here, but he still has quite a few in the mix with uh, some high energy. I five templar overall, uh, which is not too bad. There's one hiding over here. It's actually a nice spot uh, to possibly take out a um, medivac that makes its way over. And wow. Interesting style. Coffee already going for a Thor production. I don't really know what to make of this just yet, but we'll see. And that's a lot of siege tanks. That's quite a big siege tank line. Unfortunately for him, uh, Chops is coming in from all directions, and this time he has a couple of a uh, couple of zells that are on top of these siege tanks and taken out in no time. Wow, these feedbacks really hit straight on. All of the Banshees are quite low, but unfortunately Shops has run out of Stalkers, so these Banshees are actually going to take out quite a few of these models. Mods will have to move back and get right on top of the Stalkers, but ooh, a bit of a mistake from Coffee. The storms hit quite well, so the ba all of these Banshees were incredibly low. And that's the last Banshee going down. He has quite a few starports at his disposal to um, resupply with Banshees, but right now he's going for mostly Vikings, just two two Banshees at a time, since he do he does have these reactors over here. But um, he lost a great, great costly army there. So that's the problem if you go this max style. If you lose your entire army, you're in a pretty bad spot. And uh, with the amount of production that Chops has available right now, not losing all that many workers and having his fourth base on the way, I think he can uh, risk a little bit and go for this third. Workers that will have to be pulled, he's getting rid of the Thors in the back as well, and finally dealing with these Banshees, but only a few Stalkers left alive. So we'll have to focus those Banshees, and needs to keep a close eye on his Observer. Once this goes down, uh, he's actually in a bad spot, but that's the GG. And Shops closes out, makes the turnaround happen, and we'll go into a third and final map. Um, SC2 is dead. Um, I don't know when the when the Challenger League actually starts after the qualifiers. I don't know if they re if they've revealed the um, schedule yet, but we can check it out. Um, I think they did reveal the schedule. Or did they just reveal the uh, changes? Uh, we'll check it out. Have any more info here? I think I saw something. Okay, the last one is Nimbus. Okay, so I'll open that up. Okay. All right, get everyone in there. Okay, let's see. Latin America. No, that's not the one we want. Qualifier and challenger details. Um, age restrictions, residency restrictions. Uh, nope. I don't think there is a schedule yet. Uh, last qualifiers. Go to S. America qualifiers. I think the last date. Well. It's GSL, GSL. Uh, coffee's ready. And shops. Nope, I don't think we have any information for uh, for Challenger League yet. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I doubt we do. Oh! Chinese Challenger already starts? <laughs> you wanna see Naniwa? That's why you have that SC2 is dead <laughs> nickname. 
I think you go, uh, you two just go along pretty, uh, pretty much fine. All right, the next map is going to be Nimbus, and this will be our final map for this matchup. And I don't know, Chubbs played quite well in that last game, so I'm expecting a pretty amazing series, or uh, pretty amazing conclusion to this series. Let's check out if these two can make it happen. Here we have him, just turned around this series. He's playing for Team AAA. Our pink Protoss, Chubbs. And spawned in the bottom left corner, playing for Team Barcode, the Orange Terran, Coffee. I mean, Coffee looked so good in that first game, but last game, uh, his early aggression didn't really do all that much. Um, maybe he could just play it a little bit more defensively like he did in the first game and kind of wait for Chubbs to make mistakes but then again I mean if if Chubbs just doesn't attack and goes to the late game he had the perfect counter to Coffee's composition and I think he had a little bit better control in these fights of course it is quite difficult to control these mech armies but then again um, I did like the I did like Chubbs' play quite a bit Um, you guys remember how it was last year, um, or last season? I think after the qualifiers we had um, like two weeks and then challenge challenges started, or maybe just a single week, I'm not sure, but I think it wasn't that long. Right, uh, same opening for Coffee, and looks like the same opening for Chubbs as well. And both of these players not quite finding the right spawning location on the first try. But that's fine, since both of them didn't go for the uh, straight cross count. It's okay. Oh, and that's a little bit of a change up for Coffee. He's going for the Reaper this time. And while I'm not uh, too keen on Reaper play in Protoss uh, in TVP. It's, it's okay, if you can keep the Reaper alive and get in there later on, it saves you maybe one or two uh, one or two scans. So it could be quite worthwhile and you can scout out tech later, later on without wasting too much macro. And Shops uh, is quite happy to see, okay, Reaper is out. Um, since it is Nimbus, I have a little bit of time to react to the Reaper and get my Mothership core out. I don't know if he's gonna go for it. Yeah, he is gonna Chrono Boost it out just to be super safe, but I think he would have been fine even without the Chrono Boost, but just barely. And just getting the uh, Mothership Core out faster, I mean, what is he gonna Chrono Boost right now? Um, so, Nexus does make total sense. And I think I saw a second Reaper being produced. Yep, that's the second Reaper for you. Also a Reactor afterwards, and Coffee. Just has a single worker in gas, so he's definitely going another style this time. Also going for a faster expand, which does make sense on Nimbus. It's quite a big map, and you have the safe backdoor expansion. So I like the the change of plans here for Coffee. Let's see if these Reapers are gonna do anything worthwhile. Rass a little bit, get a couple of probe kills. Maybe get these probes in gas. Ah, some good reaction time for Shops retreating back and also good control coming out of coffee. Can he get a single kill here? Nope, doesn't look like it and ooh, that was close, just 4 HP left in that Reaper. But these guys are gonna heal back up due to the combat drug stimulant and we'll come back later on to check out what Shubs is doing. So yeah, we'll definitely have a change of plans here for coffee. He's going for the eBay, um, adding more barracks and of course this could be reaction to the way that Shubs played this out before but I think it's also due to the way that Nimbus uh, just opens up opens up this possibility for faster expansion that is quite safe. And at least if you go for this barracks play or met, um, bio play early on. But yeah, let's see, there's uh, Stim coming in. He's not adding in a second gas yet, so could have a little bit of a time. Ooh, there goes down the Reaper. So that's only a single Reaper surviving. And Shops, of course, also mining from his natural now. 
And as far as income is concerned, I think they're pretty much dead even, but shops has a little bit of an advantage for the gas. Of course, a uh, single gas doesn't do all that much for coffee, but with the way he's playing with this bio style, uh, it's pretty good. But he's playing a little bit blind without getting the Reaper in there a second time. He, re like, right now is pretty much the spot where you want to check out again what your Protoss opponent is doing. Because as you can see here pretty soon, once these gases are coming in and actually just scouting out these gases, we're gonna see a little bit of what Shops is planning. And he's adding in these gateways already. Did add in the uh, Robo facility early on just to be super safe since he knows, okay, coffee. Well, he tried this mech style two times in a row. I'll, I'll better be safe. And also, it helps quite a bit when you get an early observer. Coffee has this uh, semi close off. Uh, stalkers. Uh, I don't think stalkers can pass through here, but zealots can. Um, still, I think um, this works a little bit for him. And now, <laughs> closing off or cleaning off the debris. We see the tech coming into play for Chops now. Twilight Council, Robotics Bay. Um, so, he's kind of guessing that uh, Coffee is going for a bioplay this time. And we'll be quite happy to see lots and lots of marines, because with that uh, robotics bay already in production, he's gonna for sure go for Colossi pretty soon. Uh, it's actually quite nice for him to also scout out um, the reactor on the starport. So he knows, okay, I'm, pr I'm pretty good. Um, know that bioplay is coming in and that medivacs are being produced. I'm kind of curious why Coffee hasn't actually seen this observer just yet. He's finally going for some some kind of scouting, checking out if Coff if Shops has uh, established third bases already. Uh, looks like he will scout this one out as well. Yeah, Shops not quite reacting in time, and there we go. Drop is on the way, and Shops uh, he's establishing a couple of photon cannons as one in the main and the natural. He doesn't have too many units just now, but with the Colossus, if he gets gets into position, and I'm quite certain he will, because he has this observer over here sitting on the right hand side and scouting this out at least a little bit ahead of time, he should get in position. Yep, and his army is moving over here, and with the Colossus, he should be able to clear this out. Yeah, that's an excellent position for him. Colossus doesn't have thermal land just yet, but still in a good position. Uh, he didn't lose all that much. And I think uh, Medivac did win down here. Yep, Medivac, 10 Marines. So that's a good opener for Deer Shops. And he's getting a couple more Stalkers just to um, defend on other sides as well. And it's looking and gearing up towards taking that third base. And there's the third base coming up for Chops. Second drop was on the way for coffee with just a few marines. I think this was basically just um, yeah, just a fake out to get this other drop established. But with two photon cannons over here and still having the overcharge available. Ooh, second one, uh, first one slapped out quite easily. But with the overcharge, ooh, this medivac needs to watch out. Just 29 hit points. Yeah, I think uh, Shops is in d good position. We'll get um, his uh, thermal lands plus one upgrades and just static defense to get uh, defend against these drop or at least help help out against these drops and coffee finally getting his third established as well and getting some of these upgrades coming in but um, I think a little bit late on the second engineering bay would have liked that to see that a little bit sooner I think once that third actually kicks in he will need a little bit more production otherwise not gonna be able to spend all of his resources you can already see that a little bit just now but um, I think he will need a couple more barracks and possibly another starport. Right now he doesn't have too many Benevacs, but he's since he already started on Viking production to deal with the Colossi, it does make does make sense. But also means that you can't really overstim your Marines. So that's something we need to keep an eye on. How many times we'll actually see uh, stimming coming out of these guys or coming out of coffee? And again, Shops has pretty good map vision. He has observers mostly um, on the right side. He does have a single pylon on the left side. A little bit of the uh, cost-effective way to scout out scout out drops. So I like this quite a bit and he's also going for the Zealot leg speed 
which uh, does tremendous, tremendous help um, in bio play or playing playing versus bio. Oh, that's observer going down. And of course, coffee is not going to drop into the natural now, since he knows. Okay, shops. Uh, he's definitely reacting to that. I will have to move back, and actually reunites with most of his main army here. More Vikings are being produced in the meantime, and quite a few Marauders in the mix now as well. And I don't think I've seen any counter Marauder play just yet. Of course, Zealots help, but with concuss Concussive Shell and no sentries available just yet, um, I think Shops might have some trouble dealing with lo lots of Marauders right now. We'll have plus two uh, weapons and shields available pretty soon. And I don't know. It's a lot of Colossi, but if the if the Marauders stim up and get on top of the Colossi, he might run into issues, especially with uh, so many Vikings backing them up. Oh, sorry, Fjall. I'm not casting TLO, at least not for now. But um, once, like, if uh, Shops doesn't make it here, we'll go over to Gungfu Banda, and if Gungfu Banda is uh, killed off, then we'll switch over to TLO. A little bit of a poke and prod action for Chubs. Scouts out the exact composition and immediately goes over into High Templar production. He doesn't have Storm available though, so he will need to go straight for Archons. And I don't know, I don't really like that uh, all that much. Since so many Marauders are available, he should throw in a couple of Immortals at least. And that's the next drop coming in for you. But zealots are here. Uh, a couple of photon, or actually quite a few photon cannons, are available for defense. I don't think that Shops is actually gonna unload. Uh, that would be quite risky. Let's see, that's that's a big Protoss death ball, but a lot of Vikings in the mix as well. And good for him trying to pick this off. Ooh, Vikings even land here. I don't know. That must have been a misclick. He's gonna lose quite a few, and that's just playing into Shops' hands. Oh, the Marauders are trying to make a stab, but with the Vikings gone, these Colossi are just gonna melt away the bio army. And wow, what a massive blink forward, getting the remainder of these Vikings. And wow, the Zealots are still on top of things. Colossi are finally closing in as well, and that's the GG. 2-1 to one for Triple A Chubs. I can do better bio. <laughs> Coffee a little bit disappointed in himself, and especially at that first game. He just looked like such a strong mech player, but I think it was mostly the surprise for Chubbs uh, that caught him a little bit off guard. 